in some ways, it's the women that are embracing the masculine archetype in some ways that are being successful. I mean, they're, they're being extraordinarily responsible and they're, they're filling a lot of these positions quicker than men can. I mean, they're, and, and they're graduating in higher rates of college and they're, decli they're declining motherhood or they're at least suspending it throughout the West, which is, you could argue for either ways, there's reasons for that. But I guess my question is... Well, I think that the expression of the masculine spirit in women isn't denigrated. Like, p women don't get accused of contributing to the patriarchy even when they take positions in society that you would think are fully patriarchal. You know, and, and which is a strange thing. So women who go to law school and, and, then, and, and then practice as corporate lawyers, say, aren't subject to the same, what would you call it, claim that their activity is facilitating the, the decline of the planet. Yes. I guess because they're seen as, well, they're, they're, because of their gender, I suppose, they're seen as, as, as leaders of the rebellion against the patriarchal spirit, even though structurally it boils down to the same thing. Sure. So that masculine classically masculine, symbolically masculine, yearning for hierarchical productivity and competition is rewarded in women, but not in men, and which is also a very perverse thing, because well, it, it doesn't make any sense well, it conceptually. Makes, it makes sense through the postmodernist view, which is they're just undoing the oppressorship of the man of the last 150 years, so the ends justify the means. That's the way they look at it. Mm -hmm. what, whatever power women can take from men is a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's the way they look at it. Well, there's a funny thing about that, too, that I, I, I reviewed this in, in 12 Rules for Life. I was looking at some of the Pew Research data, and I don't remember the figures precisely, but over the last 15 years, the percentage of women, who young women, who claim that they would like to be married in a permanent relationship has gone up a substantial amount. I don't remember what it was. 50% approximately springs to mind, but a lot. At the same time, it's declined almost the same degree among young men. And so what's, what's perverse about this, this is something I've talked to my daughter a fair bit about, is that, I mean, if you ask young women what they want, I don't know if they can answer because I don't know if they know if they're 19 or 20 because I think their heads are so muddled by what they've been told that they don't really know. That's correct. But my sense is that women want the opportunity to develop their career in whatever direction they see fit, and fair enough. But... They want an intimate relationship, and usually a monogamous one that's permanent, and they want to have the opportunity to have kids. And what you see happening inevitably, and I believe this to be the case, I've watched very carefully as I've, as I've grown up and, and, and got older, because I've worked with women my whole life, is that women are less, com are less compelled by their career as they approach their 30s and more compelled by the desire to have a permanent relationship that, and a family. Biological, too, I would argue, too. I mean, well, I mean, there, I, I, I think it's, it's a biological necessity because women have to have children relatively young. That's correct. But it's interesting to watch it phenomenologically. And even the women that I've seen who've had very high-power careers is that as they move into their, especially their early 30s, they start to realize that the career is a pretty one-dimensional enterprise, even if it's a good career. Because even good careers are still jobs. And good careers are also very hard jobs. They're like 70 hour a week jobs and they're full bore commitment jobs. And to figure out how to have a career like that and to have a life, to have a family, to have an intimate relationship, to have children, and then to also be able to take care of them, that's a very complex, um, that's a very complex job to manage. And so what's strange is, I think what's strange is that the very things that the radicals are undermining, like the monogamous family, are actually those things that women most want, especially as they approach their yes. 30s. And so this is a catastrophe on both ends of the, of the sure. gender distribution.